Just a little bit ago, about 400 million years ago, if you didn't have several inches of literal rock covering your face, you were basically a mobile snack asking to be eaten. And so, everything back then was covered head to toe in rock hard armor. Fish had helmets, mammals had armor embedded in their skin, even the squids had giant cone shells on them. But if you look at the ocean today, the heavily armored look is almost entirely extinct. Aside from a few stubborn holdouts like turtles or the occasional crab, most of the winners of evolution have decided that being soft and squishy is actually the superior way to live. It seems completely backwards. Why would nature spend millions of years perfecting the ultimate shield, only to eventually look at it and decide to just delete it all? The most successful predators on the planet today, like great whites and orcas, are essentially walking, or swimming, around completely naked. So why did all animals decide to become so vulnerable? Well, to understand why nature got rid of armor, let's look at the creatures who made the most armored era in the history of our planet, the placoderms. These were the plate-skinned fish, which essentially means these were fish with armor, giant plated armor. And for about 50 million years, they were the apex predators in the ocean. Their armor wasn't just shells or scales. It was thick, interlocking bone plating on the head and torso. Let's take a look at Dunkleosteus. It didn't actually have teeth. Instead, it had massive, razor-sharp, bony plates that acted like self-sharpening scissors. It had a bite force nearly as strong as a T-Rex, and its only purpose was to punch through the armor of other armored fish. It was an arms race where the only solution to someone having a shield was to grow a bigger hammer. And back then, having a bigger hammer was actually pretty rare. Most early predators were, to put it lightly, not very good at their jobs. They were slow, they were clumsy, and their jaws were, well, pathetic. In a world where most things are just lazily drifting around, armor is the ultimate low effort defense. You don't need to be smart, and you definitely don't need to be fast. You just need to be hard to swallow. For a few hundred million years, armor defeated basically every problem nature could throw at it. Biting? You're biting a rock. Crushing? Good luck. Piercing with claws? You'll break your claws off. It was a rational solution for a simpler time. The ocean was less of a high-speed chase and more of a slow-motion demolition derby. But as predators started getting better, the cost of that immortality started to go up. It's not like Dunkleosteus armor was just good for its time either. No lion or tiger today would be able to claw through it. It's simply way too tough to break through. It actually was real armor. But of course, Dunkleosteus didn't last. The lions and tigers did. So why would the animal with the claws live, and the animal with the counter to the claws die? Well, armor isn't free. It comes with a massive biological fee. And for these armored fish, the tax they were paying was their own ability to move. If you're wearing inches of solid bone on your face, you aren't exactly doing gymnastics. You're heavy, you're stiff, and you move about as fast as an underwater brick. You are essentially a bank vault with a tail. It's great for keeping the inside safe, but it's terrible for literally everything else. As well, armor creates a massive energy problem. It's not like armor that knights wore where they just slapped on some chainmail and a helmet and it was kinda heavy. They had to create that armor out of something. Literally, their own body. And as you might imagine, growing real functional bone armor is expensive. To build those plates, these fish had to divert a massive amount of minerals and calories away from their muscles and organs just to maintain their shield. But even so, creating the wall was worth it. Until nature built a better sledgehammer to take those walls down. Eventually, predators stopped trying to find a gap in the armor and just decided to crush it instead. Some fish developed massive, flattened teeth that worked like industrial-grade grinders. They didn't need to be fast or graceful, they just needed to grab you once and turn your expensive bone shield into gravel. If your entire survival strategy is being hard as a rock, it's a bit of a problem when the guy eating you has jaws that are now evolved to eat rocks. And then things got even weirder. Take a look at predatory snails. Instead of using brute force, they took the high-tech approach. They evolved drills. They used a combination of acid and a serrated, sandpaper tongue to drill a perfect, tiny hole straight through the thicker skulls. It's essentially a biological locksmith. All that armor you spent millions of calories growing? It's now just the sturdy lunchbox that the snail has a key to. Once they're inside, they just liquefy the squishy bits and leave the empty shell behind. This is the turning point. 
When your defense doesn't actually defend you anymore, it's not a shield, it's just a burden. Of course, keep in mind though that these snails weren't actually going after the giant armored fish or anything that was actively fighting back, more like simple clam-like animals of the time. But they were the first things in nature that were hunting by just drilling through the shelves. Evolution realized that armor was a losing investment. The more you put into it, the more specialized the predators became at breaking it. It's an arms race where the cost of the shield eventually outweighed the protection it provided. And then animals developed the most overpowered strategy of all, turning. Armor is a huge investment for a defense that only works if the predator is as slow as you are. But predators started evolving better ways to move. They developed streamlined bodies. They stopped trying to out-tank each other and started trying to outrun each other. Suddenly, being unkillable didn't matter if you were too slow to actually catch your dinner. The ocean was shifting from a game of defense to a game of agility. And in that new world, armor wasn't a superpower. It was a literal weight dragging you down to the bottom. Being unkillable is a consistent drain on your body. You're paying for that armor every second of the day, whether there's a predator around or not. Escape is a pay-as-you-go service. You only burn the energy when you actually need it, like when a shark is behind you. The rest of the time, you're light, you're efficient, and you're actually getting things done. If you can move twice as fast as the guy trying to eat you, it doesn't matter if your skin is soft. He's never going to touch it anyway. And once the agility meta took over, the age of the biological tank was officially over. So where did all that energy go? Well, once you cancel the biological subscription to your armor, you suddenly find yourself with a massive budget surplus. So animals put that energy into things like better senses to spot danger from a mile away, or bigger brains to outsmart the guy with the big teeth, or most importantly, faster reproduction. In the long-term economy of evolution, it's actually faster to let a few squishy members of your species get eaten than it is to spend millions of years trying to make one individual indestructible. It's pretty brutal, honestly, but it works. Instead of survival of the tankiest, it becomes survival of so many offspring they can't kill all of them. Unfortunately for the armored animals, armor-heavy lineages die off disproportionately faster than most other animals. It's easier for them to go completely extinct. If your entire body is encased in bone, your bloodline is kinda locked into that shape forever. You can't exactly evolve a sleeker body or a different tail design if your skeleton is on the outside of your skin. You're a box, and you're going to stay a box. This makes armored animals incredibly bad at dealing with change. When a mass extinction happens, and over the course of hundreds of millions of years, they happen a lot, the environment shifts, the food disappears, the oxygen levels drop. In those moments, being invincible doesn't help you. What helps you is being able to change your lifestyle. Soft-bodied animals are flexible. They can adapt to new niches, shrink their size, or develop new ways of moving in just a few million years. They're like biological clay. Armored lineages, on the other hand, are like biological bricks. They're specialized for one specific world, and as soon as that world changes, they're the first ones to go extinct. It's why almost every tank from the Devonian is gone, while the squishy, pathetic-looking fish from the same era just kept on going. Evolution doesn't reward the strongest design, it rewards the one that can pivot the fastest. In some ways, it's not even survival of the animal itself, but variations of that animal. Malleable designs are more likely to win long-term if adaptations are necessary. So, if armor is such a bad investment, why do we still have things like turtles and crabs? Well, they found a loophole. Armor still works, but only if you aren't trying to be an athlete. Turtles and crabs aren't trying to outrun an orca. They live in slow niches, habitats where the predators are either just as slow as they are, or simply don't have the tools to crack them open. If your shell is just slightly tougher than the local predator's patients, you win. It's a specialized, low-speed strategy that works in the corners of the ocean where agility doesn't matter. In reality, the crab build is actually one of the best builds out there. There's a whole phenomenon about why everything seems like it's evolving into crabs that I made a video on just weeks ago. But if you're not a crab, every other creature evolved to become fast and vulnerable. Take a look at the Great White Shark. It's essentially a giant, high-speed muscle with teeth. It has zero armor. It doesn't even have a skeleton made of bone. It's made of lightweight cartilage. Its defense is its offense. In the modern ocean, the winners are the ones who can strike first and leave before the counterattack happens. We live in the age of the glass cannon, and looking at the success of sharks and whales, it's clear that being naked was the best option. 
There are still other forms of armor today though, just not solid rock armor. Take whales. Instead of growing a shell, they grew a mattress. Blubber is essentially a foot-thick layer of dense fat that acts as a biological shock absorber. It's the ultimate multitasker. It keeps the whale warm, stores energy for long trips, and happens to be a great way to handle a predator. If a shark bites a whale, it isn't hitting an organ. It isn't even hitting muscle. It's just hitting a massive buffer of oil and tissue. The whale loses a chunk of fat, but it stays perfectly functional. It's defense by just being too much work to kill. Even sharks have a secret form of stealth armor. Their skin is covered in millions of tiny, teeth-like scales called dermal denticles. If you rub a shark the wrong way, it feels like sandpaper. This is armor that actually makes you faster. It reduces drag and lets the shark glide through the water with almost zero resistance. It's not there to stop a bite. It's there to make sure the shark is the one doing the biting. So could the Age of Armor ever make a comeback? It's not like sharks could bite through Dunkleosteus armor right now anyways. No one today is prepared to break through rock hard armor because nothing today has it. Evolution would recycle ideas that worked before if they could work today again. But there's one big problem. The competition has gotten way too smart. If a fish showed up tomorrow with a face made of literal granite, an orca wouldn't just sit there trying to bite it. It would just ram it. Armor protects you from a tooth, but it doesn't protect you from physics. If you get hit by six tons of apex predator moving at 30 miles per hour, it doesn't matter how hard your shell is. Your insides are still going to turn into a jelly. For armor to really win again, the entire world would have to slow down. You'd need an environment where speed and intelligence doesn't matter anymore. Basically, the ocean would have to become a slow motion demolition derby again. And honestly, that doesn't seem likely. Once nature figured out how to make brains and muscles, it didn't really look back. Even ignoring humans, the animals today are smart. The naked predators have won the arms race, and unless the armored animals find a way to overcome armor's weaknesses, they're not coming back. And for some reason, I'm okay with that. I'm not really looking to get headbutted by a sentient rock anyway. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you really enjoyed, consider subscribing.